Looking ahead, challenges and opportunities in the changing world. Welcome to Talking Economics, podcast launched on the occasion of the 30th anniversary of the Center for Economic Research and Graduate Education, Economics Institute. The Sergi I Talking Economics podcast is the new format we are introducing to celebrate 30 years of our institution. Sergi I, since its founding in 1991, has been coming up with inspiring ideas and producing top economic research. It is entering its fourth decade at a time when substantial changes are happening in all aspects of our lives due to the global pandemic. The world is changing quickly and new themes and challenges are coming to the fore. In this podcast series, we ask our questions to reflect on the current situation and talk about the challenges and opportunities they see in their field of expertise with respect to the pandemic. In the coming month, we will introduce 10 different topics and 10 different guests, Sergii faculty members, researchers and alumni. My name is Katarina Stehlikova and I am proud to welcome as our first guest, Professor Jan Schweinar, Professor of Global Political Economy, Director of the Center on Global Economic Governance at Columbia University, and co-founder of Sergi I. Welcome, Professor Schweiner. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Professor Schweiner, as I said in the introduction, in the coming months, we will cover various fields of economics in detail. So it would be great if we could speak about economics in general with you. Would you say that... Uh, pandemics have, uh, has affected economics as well? or It certainly has affected economics. Uh, it's uh, an event which was totally unforeseen. So it's one of the largest economic shocks, in fact, the largest economic shock uh, since the Great Depression, and in some sense since uh, modern economic history, because uh, uh, over 90% of all countries uh, uh, went into a recession simultaneously. That has not happened before. There would be severe recessions, but it would be, let's say, one third of the world that would go into the recession or half, but there would be many that didn't. Now, over 90% of all the countries in the world simultaneously went down. So the shock was unexpected, was major, uh, raised a whole bunch of questions, of course, for economics as a science. To what extent can we uh, provide analyses that will lead to implications for policy that a better understanding, of course, uh, of uh, what's going on and then implications and recommendations for policy of what individual countries or groups of countries like the European Union or NAFTA in North America or all of the countries together as they are in the UN, let's say, or OECD, you know, what they should be doing. So the challenges are enormous. It's a totally new type of shock. Uncertainty has risen. People reacted by delaying consumption. Uh, firms reacted by delaying investment. So all these areas of economics, consumer theory and applications, uh, investment theory and applications, role of uncertainty, risk, all that became very important at the macro level. The governments were facing the question of how to <clears throat> react. Many of them were already highly indebted. So uh, monetary policy in terms of central bank uh, policies, in terms of fiscal policy on the part of the government, those obviously are new areas that people are examining. For instance, how can countries recover with a very large debt uh, debt to GDP ratio compared to other times. Uh, of course, specific fields like health economics, very, very important, right? Uh, labor economics, uh, you know, with um, people reacting to the uh, uh, shock. Uh, many becoming unemployed in some countries, many leaving the labor force. Uh, so you could go literally field by field from public economics, labor economics, industrial economics, and, and see how uh, researchers have been activated to really think and rethink the existing uh, models uh, to, um, to, uh, to sort of try to answer the questions that, uh, that arise. You're jumping ahead. That was my... Uh later question about the fields of economics, but maybe maybe we will go into that uh, in more detail. If you should say, what are the three biggest challenges in, in economics due to the pandemics uh, with respect to our models or, you know, the science we, we do? Yeah, so I would say that uh, um, 
that uh, there is a general sort of question, do we understand how economies uh, go down and up, how they can recover? And second, I think what has really become uh, a buzzword nowadays is resilience. Can we make economies be more resilient to the type of shocks that the pandemic uh, brought about? Likely there will be other shocks like that. Uh, that's what, in fact, people working on infectious diseases and uh, virologists uh, to keep telling us. So in a way, being able to design economic structures that uh, are more able to withstand these kinds of shocks is a major challenge that I think will be taken up by economics as a whole. Mm-hmm. Would you say, as, as you said, uh, the collaboration with virologists, uh, would you say that economics has expanded its collaboration with other fields? I would say so. I would say it's going on. You know, it's similar to, let's say, when um, neuroeconomics started a couple of decades ago, when people, uh, economists started working with neuroscientists, medical doctors and so on. Uh, Of course, behavioral economics is a very good example where psychologists and economists started working together, something that was not there before. So I think that this is really at the time when economists are beginning to ask questions, sort of what's the optimal uh, economic approach to a shock of this magnitude and uh, and how can <clears throat> economists together with other scientists uh, in fact uh, come up with models that uh, help us understand what's going on and how best to cope with it. Mm-hmm. There are many challenges. Uh, do you see, talking to, to other economists, There are new topics that are becoming important, new new areas of research that. Uh... Well, so I think I think that people are using the existing areas to tackle new questions or new points of view of how to how to look at issues, for instance, of uh, unemployment, uh, government policies to reduce uh, layoffs uh, and keep workers attached to the firms even during the period of uh, uh, major major recession. Uh, there is uh, a totally new areas of uh, you know, fiscal intervention that are being looked at, as I mentioned, the monetary policy with quantitative easing and going into uh, uh, next phase of major uh, indebtedness of governments as well as monetary policy responses. Uh, there is, I think, uh, in terms of economic development at the macro level, continuing with the same idea, uh, the question of how can um, Uh, central banks in developing countries, uh, not in the main advanced economies, best protect and react to the shock given what the central banks in the advanced countries are doing. Because what you have there is the central banks like European Central Bank and American Central Bank, the Fed, are basically pursuing policies that are beneficial for their country. That's their mandate. That has major effect, of course, on other countries and their central banks are trying to figure out what is the best response, for instance, having larger reserves. right? And so I think this will be an area that will be studied much more. How can countries best protect themselves when there is a synchronized shock to the whole world? And big players like European Central Bank and the Fed are responding in an optimal way from their perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, the pandemic has hit uh, the, the globalization and connection of the world greatly. So do you see uh, how it impacted economics of, you know, economics of international collaboration? Yes, trade okay. and, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. So again, even the uh, uh, theories, economic theories, for instance, of just-in-time uh, sourcing, etc., mm-hmm. right, uh, are affected. So new models of corporate optimal behavior will be developed given that there may be interruptions, disruptions in deliveries And in fact, the present recession is unusual in the sense it's not just deficient demand, but it's also obstacles to supply that are leaving firms uh, at a loss in terms of production, right? So I think that there is, uh, that's going to be studied. And I expect, for instance, that the supply chains will be shortened, that firms will have more supplies within the same continent or same country compared to where it was before. On the other hand, uh, digitalization is uh, taking on much greater speed. And I think that's going to be another area that will be studied is how digital economy will proceed in the next phase 
And that, of course, announced much greater globalization that enables firms uh, to and governments and everybody, individuals to shop and interact truly globally. So on the one hand, we will have kind of deglobalization in terms of making sure that your supplies are available, even in a shock. And on the other hand, we'll have much more globalization coming from the digital economy that's evolving so fast. It's fascinating how it really impacted every every field of economics or every aspect of economics. Are you able to say, or if if you could try to say, which are the three fields of economics that got really into the spotlight? Like this is something we need to focus on. So I think macro macroeconomics obviously is in the spotlight because uh, the question is how best to to handle the present situation. The field is very diverse. There are different schools of thought. There are people who worry about inflation and it hasn't been happening for 20 years. The central banks have been worried about uh, too little inflation, deflation in fact, right? Now uh, major government interventions are being enacted and being considered to be continued. Uh, and so that of course is again raising fears of inflation possibly you know, taking root. So I think macro broadly conceived, uh, fiscal, monetary and all the other aspects will be, will be I think a major field. Um, I think that um, then I would say um, obviously you know, health economics is going to, I think, come to the forefront. And then at the micro level, I think both the uh, uh, investment theory and behavior taking in more uh, uncertainty into account and consumer theory, and that includes, of course, uh, labor market as well as consumption. I think those will be the areas that will get uh, major attention. Perfect. Uh, now, Building on it, uh, in the Czech Republic, after we successfully handled the first wave in uh, in spring 2020, the later waves of epidemic and restrictions were met with doubt, ignorance and resistance. And uh, this was probably a result of ineffective communication and of course the main uh, group to blame are the politicians. But what about economists and, and economics Would you say that we can do a better job communicating the results of our research to politicians and the public? I would say kind of a truism is we always can communicate better. But uh, but given that, I think that you're right that the main problem, I think, was the behavior and decisions of policymakers, not the economists. In fact, when you look at it, Sergi I was at the forefront of studying the problems, uh, both uh, individuals, but also through the think tank idea, which I started, what, 12 years ago and so on, which has now become you know, a major, major think tank in the country. And uh, it indeed, I think, has provided numerous studies that have been available Some were used, some were used less, uh, so that's where it comes to what extent the results are there. Uh, a number of uh, faculty members from Sergi I were part of the economic uh, advisory team of the crisis chiefs of staff. I had it that that was in March till till May, so we were providing advice. That, by the way, is on the web pages of IDEA within Sergi I, so everybody can see what and when we were uh, advising the government. And indeed, there were some things that the government accepted and there were some things which they didn't and I think the major <clears throat> shortcoming was that the government was too cautious in terms of how quickly to attack the problem, how much money to spend on testing and tracing. Uh, those were not huge sums, so much greater sums, orders of magnitude greater sums were spent by the government, but not in the area that we economists and epidemiologists and others were advising for them to do. And then I think there was the uh, total uh, lack of preparation during the summer, that in a way there were several months where institutions could have been prepared, where measures could have been uh, adopted, and yet uh, the country came into the fall season basically unprepared. And then we had one of the toughest uh, six, uh, seven months uh, of all countries in the world with all the uh, unfortunate uh, people who uh, uh, succumbed to uh, COVID and uh, 
and indeed uh, took us very, very long time as a country to to get out of it. Hopefully, we're now uh, getting out. But but I would say that it was a and that's another area which is important to study is the functioning of uh, public administration. That it was the policymakers on the top, but the entire the Ministry of Health and you know all the people who are sufficiently educated at all levels of the government, and yet the government could not function as an efficient bureaucracy. I, in fact, give sort of a uh, tongue-in-cheek example. You know, we're in the region, Central Europe, where uh, Max Weber, the well-known, renowned German uh, uh, sociologist in the 19th century, described how efficient the bureaucracy can be, how it works really well, everything is organized. And then we have Franz Kafka, who was describing how mind-boggling it can be when it doesn't work to an understanding. So, um, unfortunately, we've taken a little bit too much from Kafka, I think, relative to Weber. (laughs) (laughs) Unfortunately, I have to agree. Uh, Now, I agree that the studies done by IDEA were excellent and are available, and many of people who who work in IDEA are Sergio graduates. So, the question is, do you think that the, the economic education, including programs which are offered at Sergii, are preparing students for the challenges of, of the world, of the changing world? I think that um, when you look at the region as a whole, Central Eastern Europe, let's say, I would say that I would, I would assert that Sergii is still providing by far the best preparation and that we can see it, as you say, people working within IDEA, people working in uh, central banks, people working, of course, in academic institutions, in the international institutions, such as the World Bank, International Monetary Fund, uh, European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. So, so yes, I would say we really are providing the kind of education which is not only tough, but very useful, so that people who come out of here are, I think, among the better thinkers in terms of economics and economic policy. And uh, yeah, that's what makes us proud of uh, where we are 30 years after the start. Perfect. Thank you. Maybe uh, one last question. We talked about economics, but uh, what about the people behind it? Do you see or have you experienced any challenges for the economists as people doing research? Was it difficult here or? Well, so I would say generally worldwide, of course, all researchers have found it difficult to shift from being able to sit together and go to seminars together and uh, chat over lunch or coffee or beer or whatever uh, to doing everything online. So in that sense, economics was no exception. Uh, perhaps because we rely somewhat less on laboratories than uh, uh, natural scientists like biologists and uh, uh, chemists. Uh, so it maybe it was not that difficult as it was for some others, but it definitely was a major shift. Uh, and so I can tell from my own experience, and I think others will corroborate that, that uh, to reorient oneself entirely to online instruction, to... Uh, doing research and communicate only online, uh, you know, certainly slowed, slowed us down. And in fact, at Sergi, we've, um, uh, together with other major universities in the world, we, for instance, extended the time period during which young professors, assistant professors, have to prove themselves. So we extended the tenure clock, as it's called, by one year, just mm-hmm. so that people have a little bit more time to complete the research and show the results of their work. So, so indeed, we've reacted to this reality And yes, just like the decline of all the economies, um, I think that scientific research, at least at the beginning, suffered a setback, a slowdown. Although now I would say there are um, definitely uh, improvements and some, one could even argue that in some sense, uh, things are better. I mean, now you can... uh, participate at uh, two conferences on or three conferences on three different continents in the same day which you <laughs> obviously could not do before right so uh, so yes there are examples there there are economies uh, that can be realized as well perfect 
Um, thank you. I don't have any more questions. I don't know if you have any concluding remarks. No, so I would say that, uh, you know, it is uh, wonderful that we are celebrating the 30th anniversary of Serge AI. I think the track record in everything, research, education, the hundreds of alumni that are all over the world, your stellar example of, of that, okay. uh, you know, are, you know, something that really, you know, one sees as a major accomplishment. I think also people sometimes don't really Realize. But once you have been in existence for 30 years, you have a track record. You're no longer fly-by-night operation. People realize this is an institution that's here to stay, which makes it, of course, easier than to recruit good professors, to recruit good students, to raise funds and uh, apply for grants that are of long-term duration and so on. So I think that the track record and the trajectory that we have is promising. Perfect. There is nothing more to it. Thank you for your kind words and thank you for being here. Thank Professor you for Stephen. having me. It's great to be here. <laughs>